All right, folks, this is going to be the second video in our series covering my archery shot cycle. Uh, last week we talked about stance and posture, and today we're going to be talking about bow hand position. We're going to talk about why that's important, uh, some common mistakes, and then how to avoid them. So we'll see you after the intro. All right, so like we're gonna be doing in all of these videos, I wanna start off by prefacing everything that I'm gonna say in this video with this, uh, the methods that I use, this is what I have found that works best for me in the type of uh, situations that I find myself in most often. And it should not be taken as gospel. There's a lot of different ways to hold and shoot these bows. Uh, this is just one example and it might be able to help you. Maybe it won't, maybe it will. So just keep that in mind. So when it comes to the bow hand, there are two main considerations, stability and repeatability. We need to be able to create a stable platform from which the bow can do its work, and we need to be able to repeat that platform over and over again. Something that we're gonna cover later on in this series is bone on bone structural support that creates that solid foundation. But in this video, we're gonna focus on the bow hand itself, that interface between that solid foundation that's created through your form and the bow itself. We need to be able to capitalize on that stability, that foundation that you create through good form. And the best way to do that is to hold the bow in such a way that the pressure from the bow is transferred straight into the major bones of the arm. And the way to do that is right through the base of the thumb. So if you take your bow hand and put it out in front of you and just create a V with your thumb and your forefinger, that's about the right position that you wanna be in to hold this bow. And so if I put my bow up there and just put a little bit of tension on the string just to hold it into my hand, you can see that I've got that about that same hand position. And you'll notice that my knuckles relative to the bow are coming off about a 45 degree angle. When you do this, it takes all the pressure from this bow, puts it right at the base of your thumb, and the base of your thumb is lined up perfectly with the major bones in your arm. Now, if you've got good form, which is something we're gonna cover later in this series, when you draw this bow, all of that pressure that the bow is exerting goes right through the base of your thumb, right up into your forearm, the major bones of your forearm, and in a straight line through your shoulders. So this type of bow hand position uh, not only allows that pressure point to transfer that energy straight up into your arm and through your form, but it also minimizes our contact with the bow and the less contact we have with the bow, the less opportunity we have to mess up that interface because the interface itself is perfect if we allow it to be perfect. So when we hold our bow like this, if you turn sideways, you can see it a little better. better. We've got a very solid connection with that bow, meaning that we've got a little bit of padding right here at the base of the thumb, but once you get beyond that, you're straight into heavy bone. And as I said, if you've got good form, all that bone on bone structural support is helping you to maintain stability. So the bow hand position is something that's pretty straightforward, uh, but as easy as it seems, it's something that's very easily messed up. And usually that's in one of two ways, either an improper grip or something that's very common uh, and something that I still do on occasion, and that's grabbing the bow uh, when you release the arrow. So one thing that's pretty common, especially with new archers, is when they grab a bow, they grab that thing like a, an ax handle or something. They've got a hold on it, they're squeezing it, they're grabbing it with their whole hand. And when we do that, when we squeeze that bow and just have a lot of contact with it, we can build up a lot of tension in our forearm and our wrist. And really, when you do that, when you build up tension anywhere, in your forearm, in your, in your string hand forearm, you can lose a lot of the benefits that you get from good form. And that's that bone-on-bone that -bone structural support that I was talking about. Because when you do that, Essentially, you make that interface, that connection from your good structure to the bow, you make that a little bit squishy. And when you grab the bow after a shot, it's essentially doing the same thing. You're engaging muscles that don't need to be engaged. And when we engage muscles, we kind of override that structural support that we can get from our bones and just make everything less stable. So to get that really good alignment and that good connection from your skeletal structure through your wrist to the bow, 
you've got to have that base of that thumb directly on the back side of your bow handle. If it's rolled too far in, if it's rolled too far out, that's not going to cut it. That's not going to be as stable. You may be able to shoot fine that way, but it's not going to be as stable as if you roll that hand in just a little bit, just enough so that the base of your thumb right here is right on the back of that bow handle. When you do that and you put some pressure on it, all of that pressure that you're placing goes straight through the base of your thumb right into the major bones of the forearm. So when you grip your bow like this, uh, for one, it uh, oftentimes can introduce a bunch of torque into the bow, but it also uh, pushes your forearm into the string and it makes it really prone for that string to slap your forearm. Now, I hardly ever shoot with an arm guard and I shoot a bow with a pretty low brace height. Most of my bows have a brace height, uh, meaning the distance between here and here of around six and a half inches, which is fairly low. But I still don't have uh, very much trouble with the string slapping my forearm because I do kick that, uh, kick that grip out quite a bit. And that just rolls your forearm out of the way of that string. So all that's good and fine, but if we're not supposed to squeeze the bow, we're not supposed to grab the bow when we shoot, how are we supposed to keep this thing from jumping out of our hands when we shoot the bow? Now, if you look at uh, some of the com competitions, you'll notice, especially like the Olympic style, the field style archery, you'll notice those guys wearing little finger slings. All it is is just a cord that runs from your thumb around the riser of the bow to your index finger right there. And what that does is it allows those guys to shoot with a very open grip. It allows them to shoot their shot without putting any inputs into grabbing that bow in an effort to stop that thing from uh, coming out of their hand when they release. So finger slings are a great solution. They uh, allow you to hold that bow with a very loose grip. They allow you to shoot that shot with very minimal inputs into the bow from your bow hand. But in my opinion, they're not a very practical thing for bow hunting, at least not the type of bow hunting that I do. Uh, I don't want to be tethered to my bow, and the last thing that I need to worry about when an animal is coming in is trying to get a finger sling uh, on my fingers. So the way that I deal with this is simply to take my pointer finger on my bow hand and just place it on the front of the riser. I'm not squeezing with this hand, I'm just placing it there. Now, admittedly, this is a little bit of a compromise. I do still technically have to catch that bow when I shoot it. Uh, I do have to put a little bit of tension into my uh, pointer finger like that to keep the bow from coming out of my hand. Um, I feel like if I were to shoot with a finger sling, I could be a little bit more accurate, but for me, in the type of hunting situations that I am in, um, I am more than willing to make that trade off. I don't need to hit quarters at 20 yards every time. What I need to be able to do is get into shooting position very quickly and then also uh, very quietly and without a lot of movement. Now I hunt from the ground a lot and a lot of times you'll see me standing at the base of trees like this just with, my, with an arrow knocked, um, you know, hand in a pocket if it's cold or something like that in a coat pocket. And uh, like this, all I have to do is make those movements right there. If, my, if I had a, a, a sling on my finger, I, that wouldn't be practical, it wouldn't be possible. And if I had the sling off of my finger, I'd have to be sitting here trying to fiddle with it to, uh, to get that thing back on. See if I can find my tab here. All right, so next week uh, we're gonna be covering form, which is the foundation 
that the rest of this shot is going to be built on. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that. Make sure you turn on notifications and uh, see if I can hit what we're aiming at here. And we'll see you next week. <clears throat> I, one thing I want to address is I get a lot of comments about how noisy my bow is. And one thing you got to realize is I have a microphone right here, which is exactly where the string is. So the, it's not that the bow is noisy, it's that the microphone is like two millimeters away from the string. I have a, I have a mayfly on my arrow. I'll take that. <clears throat> 12 ring. Peace.